Next, I want to get to a compilation of video clips from the last few years where we see Alan Greenspan on Lair News Hour say Congress has no authority over the private Federal Reserve who controls our currency and our credit. Remember, in the Constitution, the Congress is supposed to control that. Now, the president's taken the power of war making away. It's all part of the centralization that Hitler, Stalin, Mao, Julius Caesar, 2,000 plus years ago, engaged in. Next, we get to another Alan Greenspan clip from a few weeks ago where he told uh, the show Meet the Prostitutes, Meet the Press, that the Fed isn't worried about defaulting on T bills that people have bought because they'll just print money. And they've got Austin Goolsby, the skull and bones are on there, who works for Obama, kind of freaks out that he would say this publicly because that's another form of default to hyperinflate the currency and it destroys people on fixed incomes and destroys savings. Then we're going to go to a clip of Bernanke arguing with Ron Paul and the banking committee saying gold is not money. And then we expand from there where Congress is asking Bernanke, where is the money? Where are the hundreds of billions and trillions? And he says, no, I won't tell you. So gold isn't money, and they won't tell you where all the taxpayer backed up fiat debt notes have gone. And then finally, we're going to play a clip of the former Treasury Secretary. They're all working as a team, the last two administrations. Henry Paulson being asked where all these hundreds of millions of dollars went that he gave himself how do you give yourself the former head of Goldman Sachs this money? He can barely talk. He, he's all breaking up, but somebody's asking him a real question, and he goes on to basically say he gave himself a waiver through the White House. So here is this incredible compilation. And I ask you the question, will America allow itself to be fully bankrupt and dominated and conquered by these criminal banksters? What is the uh, proper relationship? What should be the proper relationship between a chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. And uh, I've had uh, very good relationships with the President. Are U.S. Treasury bonds still safe to invest in? Very much so. I think there's a... This is not an issue of credit rating. The United States can pay any debt it has because we can always print money to do that. So there is zero probability of default. The reason the Federal Reserve was founded a century ago was to try to address the problems arising from financial panics, which did, by the way, occur in an unregulated environment in the 19th century. Um, we provided liquidity and short-term loans to help financial systems stabilize. We did that not because we particularly care about the managers. You say it's not spending money. Well, it's money out of thin air. You put it into the market, you hold assets, and the assets aren't, you know, they, they are diminishing in value. When you, when you wake up in the morning, do you care about the price of gold? Well, I pay attention to the price of gold, but I think it reflects a lot of things. It reflects uh, global uncertainties. I think people are, the reason people hold gold is as a protection against what we call tail risk, really, really bad outcomes. And to the extent that the last few years have made people more worried about the potential of a major crisis, then they have gold as a protection. Do you, th do you think gold is money? No. It's not money. It's Even a, it's if it has been money for 6,000 years, somebody reversed that and eliminated that economic law. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's an asset. I mean, it's the same. Would you say treasury bills are money? I don't think they're money well, why, either, but why they're why financial assets. Why asset. do central banks hold it? Well, it's, it's the former reserves. It's why don't they hold diamonds? Well, it's tradition, long-term <laughs> tradition. So my question to you is, will you tell the American people to whom you lent 2.2 trillion of their dollars. Will you tell us who got that money and what the terms are of those agreements? We, ex we explain each of our programs. In terms of the terms, we explain the terms exactly. We explain what the collateral requirements are. We explain what To the whom did you explain are. that? It's, it's on our website. Yeah, okay. So all that information is available uh, in our commercial paper program. And who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks. Any bank 
or that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. Can you tell us who they are? No, because the reason that is counterproductive and will destroy the value of the program is that banks will not come to the discount. Well, isn't that too bad? I left Goldman Sachs. I sold my shares in Goldman Sachs. Tax I, deferred, too. I, I, you didn't have any tax on your $200 I, million. Dollars. I sold my Isn't shares in Goldman Sachs. I, I, the clause that if you come into the administration, you sell your assets, it's tax deferred. You don't have to pay 200 If you had $200 million profit, you didn't have to pay any tax. Isn't that true? Listen, it's, it's Is not that a, true or not? It's, it's, yes or it no? Is, you do not pay a profit when someone, a, a, a tax when someone Maybe makes you sell assets. Maybe that was for you to become Secretary of Treasury so you didn't have to pay the tax there. Oh. The next thing I would say to you, and say it very, very clearly, is uh, I, uh, you know, I behaved with the. Uh, you don't the, think you should have recused yourself when you asked Lehman to go into bankruptcy? You didn't put Bear Stearns in bankruptcy, and then you folded Merrill Lynch into. I mean, isn't there some point where you got to say, "Hey, I got a conflict of interest here"? You don't feel any kind of scintilla of ethics on this thing at all? Uh, totally. I, I, I operated very consistently with the, in the ethic guidelines I had as Secretary of the Treasury. And when it became, uh, when it became clear that, that uh, we had some very significant issues, with Goldman Sachs and with with, with why didn't you recuse with, yourself with Morgan then? Stanley? What I did then, it would have been very wrong for me to recuse myself. What I did was I went and got a waiver from the ethics agreement because when we had concerns, who's in charge of the ethics agreement? What? Who's in charge of the ethics agreement that we, you got a waiver? We, we have we have a uh, office of of ethics at Treasury and we have a White House ethics <laughs> office. I mean, there's no end to it. And we're called the conspiracy theorists because we read the Constitution and watch C-SPAN and know what these guys are up to. Now, I'm not going to tell you where the trillions are. Gold isn't money, but our debt derivatives garbage is. Uh, the Federal Reserve is above the law. And we'll just print money and bankrupt everybody but ourselves. Ha, ha, ha. It's incredible what these Ponzi scheme operators have done. So these criminals think that they are above the law. Now I want to go to some clips from yesterday on my syndicated radio broadcast when I talked to presidential candidate Congressman Ron Paul. There's three different issues we cover. Federal Reserve is liquidating its debt. It has to do it by default or they have to do it by basically hyperinflating the currency. And Ron Paul points out, no, you write off the fraudulent derivatives that the American people don't owe. You make Wall Street take the haircut instead of saddling us with that debt. Next, I asked Congressman Ron Paul about Rick Perry, uh, this former uh, Al Gore chief of staff, former Hillary Care supporter uh, in the mid-90s, and Congressman Ron Paul responds to that. And finally, I talked to Ron Paul about his statement last year about the fact that the CIA has had a coup over the United States. Here's the Congressman's comments. Once the country gets this indebted, uh, they never pay their bills. They can't work their way out. Theoretically, we could, you know, if we did all the things necessary, but in reality, countries uh, don't. And especially if you end up over 40% uh, of the money you need to operate, if you have to borrow it, it's at a point uh, almost of no return. So they have to liquidate the debt. Uh, first, they won't admit we're in bankruptcy. Uh, because they've been able to pawn it off on the American taxpayers by raising taxes and inflating the currency and borrowing around the world. But we literally are bankrupt. So the debt has to be liquidated. And it is true, we won't default on the debt in the sense that uh, uh, they, they won't pay off the holders of bonds. They'll always be paid off, just like the holders of the obligations for Social Security will always send a check. But what they don't have control on is the value of that money they sent. Matter of fact, it is a deliberate policy of the Fed, and Bernanke has uh, essentially admitted this, that uh, the only way we can get out of this is inflation. Some of the... Some of He's the, trying to become you, so what do you say to that? Well, I think that people have to realize and look at his record, and when they look at his record, they know that he's a flip-flopper. I mean, how can what he say uh, be much different than what Romney has done with his med medical care system up in Massachusetts? Uh, and you're right. Uh, 
uh, Perry has endorsed uh, Hillary's program. So, <laughs> but the American people, uh, you know, I guess one reason why it seems so obvious to me, why does anybody even have to lecture people? Why don't they just wake up and look at history and investigate a little bit? Uh, it's, um, there's been a coup. Have you heard? It's the CIA coup. The coup, the CIA runs everything. They run the military. We've had a coup in America. I want you to specifically, because i got a lot of questions about that to this day, what you exactly meant by that. The CIA uh, is involved in war. They, they are involved in military activity. Uh, they pick targets from uh, Langley in, in, the Alexand you know, in, in Virginia. They can shoot missiles to any spot in the world, generally killing a lot of people they shouldn't be killing and missing the ones they're trying to target. So therefore, it is totally secret. It, this is even out of, you know, out of the realm of what Obama does when he says, well, I'm going in and I'm just going to be with NATO and I'm going to start bombing Libya. I think uh, this is uh, very serious. And now we have the DOD person, uh, Petraeus, going over to the CIA and then uh, the CIA uh, head going over to the military. It, it's such a mixed deal that... Uh, we don't know exactly what's happening, but I know the CIA has been involved in so many elections around the world. They pick and choose dictators.